Vitamin D is critical. What percentage of people here have vitamin D deficiency? Okay, so I'm seeing about half the hands go up. The true answer in the general population is 80 percent. All right, the number, the number that you're looking for in terms of an adequate vitamin D level is between 50 and 100 on LabCorp testing. 50 and 100. LabCorp says that 30 is adequate. So if you're at 30, no. If you read the literature, the literature says 50 to 100. Five years ago, we thought adequate vitamin D was about 15. All right. The recommended daily allowance of vitamin D was 400 international units. The way we arrived at the recommended daily allowances is we figured out well, how little vitamin D you need to have in order to develop rickets. Then we added 10%. And we figured, great, you didn't have a vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is critical in immunomodulation. What does that mean? It affects the intrinsic and it affects the extrinsic functioning of the immune system. All right? You have low vitamin D, you are going to be susceptible to developing autoimmune disease. If you have low vitamin D, you're also going to be susceptible to developing a bunch of cancers. Breast, prostate, pancreatic, lung. And how do you fix vitamin D? It's a little pill that you can take as a supplement, vitamin D3. You should have your levels measured because it can get toxic. But frankly, in all the years we've been supplementing it, treating it, measuring it, we haven't seen a single person develop toxicity. Toxicity doesn't, there are no evidence of toxicity with vitamin D levels uh, below 150. So we've got a pretty big therapeutic window in there, and it is a critical and easy nutrient to get. You want to pay attention to the vitamin D that you're getting because sometimes the filler that you're using has uh, lactose in it, and you don't want to be taking the lactose if you're lactose intolerant. Magnesium. <coughs> Magnesium is also another critical nutrient that is frequently not tested for. All right? Now, you can check magnesium in the blood, which is a, leaves me at a complete loss. All right? 60% of magnesium is bound to the bone. 38% of magnesium is inside the cells of the body, and about 2% of magnesium is floating around in the serum, in the blood. That serum level is preserved at the cost of the intercellular level. What that means is that they'll keep pulling it out of the tissues and keep sticking it in the blood in order to maintain the, the normal blood level. So by the time you have an abnormal blood magnesium level, you are at end stage disease. All right? Magnesium deficiency can result in migraines. Magnesium deficiency will result in chronic fatigue. Magnesium deficiency will result in muscle pain. Magnesium deficiency can result in fatal arrhythmias. Magnesium deficiency is actually really, really important. And many people who think they have thyroid disease, and we keep looking at them, figure out they have thyroid disease. The real problem is magnesium deficiency, not thyroid. So the way we test for magnesium, there's two tests you can do. One is you can check red cell levels and white cell levels of magnesium. We've done that for a number of years. We stopped doing it because we found the test too unreliable. We would test, we, we test our testing centers, and we found that there was not enough uh, consistency in terms of the results. The test we do find to be most consistent is intercellular magnesium, which is uh, tested by this one particular lab, Intercellular Diagnostics. We scrape cells from inside the mouth, and uh, they do spectrographic studies uh, of the cells in order to determine the exact uh, levels of magnesium in the system. If magnesium is low, at uh, this level, for instance, we do not believe you can adequately replace it orally because if you take too much magnesium, you're going to start having diarrhea, which is going to cause more magnesium loss. Uh, if you uh, take an adequate amount to start absorbing it or you've had problems with absorption of it to begin with, then what you're going to end up doing uh, is taking about a year to two years to start getting the magnesium levels up. Uh, so we recommend IV replacement of the magnesium in order to bring the levels up. 